welcome to the first episode of Writing on the Run for 2019. And what do we have for you today? Why, it's Amazon's Kindle Fire 7. And I hear what some of you are saying. Why would I lead off my 2019 season with a tablet that's already been reviewed by every tech show on YouTube? Well, it has been reviewed as an average low-cost tablet, but it hasn't been reviewed for uses for a writer. If you're an author, there are some things here that the average mortal hasn't quite figured out yet. And we're going to unpack this and go over those features today. Stay tuned. My name is Robert Jones, and you're watching The Story. When I first purchased my Kindle Fire 7, I did it because I wanted an expendable tablet. It was low cost, it was on sale around Christmas time for $30 or $35. It's something that I could knock around, bring with me, and I didn't care if it got broke or beat up because I only spent $30 on the thing. Once I started using it, however, I saw that it wasn't quite as expendable as I originally thought it was, especially for my writing. And before we get into that, we want to get into the specs a little bit, because if you haven't seen the other videos or you're wondering what upgrades Amazon has done to this thing over the past year or two, we're going to cover a little bit of that first. As you can see, it has a seven inch IPS display and that's still 1024 by 600, which is 171 PPI. The eight gigabytes of memory that it used to have is now optional with 16 gigabytes of internal storage. And where it used to be expandable with a micro SD card up to 128 gigs, it's now expandable up to 256 gigs, which is great if you wanna download movies and bring them with you. It has a 1.3 gigahertz quad-core processor and up to eight hours battery life, which is great. I've never had a problem taking it out and using it with mixed use for a day. Initially, I don't think they were Alexa enabled. I believe that was added about a year ago and the one gigabyte of RAM memory is still there. The rest of it is pretty much standard with the 720p HD recording potential, I mean, that's like two megapixel camera. You have to be outside or in very bright light to get anything decent out of that. The Kindle Fire 7 is also very portable, coming in at just seven and a half by four and a half inches. It isn't much larger than most cell phones. Let's look at the things that Amazon designed it for because Amazon made this for your entertainment purposes. Also for people who love the Amazon universe and you want to subscribe to their unlimited music or Prime and have Alexa, that's all here. Some of the reviews talked about the idea of having all the buttons on top being a little bit odd because they are all in one section. There's your power button, the charging port, there's a built-in microphone, the volume rocker, and a headphone jack. That's really not so odd to have it all in one space when you think about watching movies on this thing. You're going to be watching them in landscape mode. Having them all on one side makes them easy to reach. And if you actually want to hook up an external speaker, since this only has like one small speaker, Having everything on the side is a lot less awkward than having speaker wires detached where your hands might be holding it. So that was actually a pretty smart design point, and I'm sure that that's the reason why they're all on the top. For entertainment purposes, this works not only like a traditional tablet. It has internet access. It supports most apps. It also has an Amazon platform that's built over the Android body, and that gives you books, videos from Amazon. If you're into the whole Amazon universe, everything is right at your fingertips. There's apps, there's a lot of free games, which works great for kids. There's shopping, 
there's the App Store. All your music, whether it's Amazon Music or you use Amazon to upload your own music to their cloud, it's there. Audible, newsstand, and this does everything that a traditional Kindle can do as well, meaning you can have your whole Kindle book library wherever you go. It can read your books to you while you're driving. The only thing that this doesn't do that a standalone Kindle does is it doesn't have the um, paper white display. So you do have a traditional backlit screen, which is going to have some glare if it's in bright light or sunlight. That would be the only thing that separates this from a standalone Kindle. How does video handle on this unit? Let's take a look at Netflix and see. It's not HD video, but it really doesn't look bad at all. It's very watchable. Let's get into the real reason you're here if you're a writer, and that's how productive can you actually be on the Fire 7. I know at least one person who actually does all their writing on a Kindle and publishes it to Amazon directly from their Kindle. It does have that capability. But as a writer, when I have used this, I've used it in Office Suite Pro, which you can get for this. There is a number of free word processors that Amazon provides in their app store but the Office Suite Pro seems to be a little bit better for being productive. And then I just transferred it to my computer. But what I discovered, and why you're all here, is the reading option. Let's get a demonstration of the reader. And this is Microsoft Office Suite Pro. And what I found out when I went to the tab for text-to-speech in this program, all those voices that read my books in Kindle could be transferred into this program. So I'm not stuck with the robotic voice that comes with the app. I can choose any of the voices that read the books in Kindle. Here's an example of the mail reading voice. It's identical to the voice that reads your books on Kindle if you select the text to speech option. The voice does add some inflection to the speech and seems to be able to pronounce most common words accurately. It's also a female voice. Depending on preference of the sex of the narrator, you always have options and both voices have more character and sound less robotic than many of the readers I've heard. And that's due to Amazon's efforts to upgrade their Kindle readers across the board. The biggest surprise I discovered was the device's ability to read accents from around the world, which makes perfect sense when you consider specific accents native to their various countries will make foreign languages read more authentically for customers on a global level. That's right you can get accents from all around the world with this thing, meaning you can give your characters an authentic sound. So let's go back and reread that same passage that we use the UK accent and a different accent. The biggest surprise I discovered was the device's ability to read accents from around the world, which makes perfect sense when you consider specific How accents cool is that? to their various countries will make foreign languages read more authentically for customers on a global level. How you access that is going up to text-to-speech. At the bottom you'll see a tab that says more options. When you click on more options you'll get this default voice which is the readers that you've already downloaded and then there's download additional voices. When you go to the additional voices look at that Danish, Dutch, English, Australian, Indian, United Kingdom, Canada, France, Germany. I mean, it's, it's all there. And you get a male and a female reader for both types of accents. Where are you going to find that for $50? That right there for me was huge. That's a lot to get in one small tablet. For $50, I think I definitely got my money's worth here. I also bought an inexpensive keyboard folio case, which elevated it to a whole different level of productivity. But for me, in exploring this, it went from 
that inexpensive tablet that could get knocked around to something that was more. It went from a, a little Android tablet with an Amazon platform stamped across its tiny little heart to something that became very useful to me. So if you want to buy your own Kindle Fire 7, I have a link below. I do have an Amazon associate account that I started, so using that link will help to support the channel by giving me a small percentage of whatever Amazon gets from this. Also, if you've watched the video up to this point, I have something for one lucky viewer. You can use this for $10 off your Kindle purchase, or you can use it for anything that you like. And if you get to use it and cash it in, comment in the section below and let me know. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope that you buy a Kindle Fire for your own purposes. And if you do, I hope that you will let me know and uh, share it with others, because I know that there's a lot of writers out there looking for something that's not going to cost hundreds of dollars that could read their manuscript. And this discovery was something that I thought worth sharing. I hope that you do too. So until next time, keep those keyboards clacking. Remember to like and subscribe, because if you like and share, then YouTube will suggest it to more people and they can get in on this. And it's all about spreading the word to other writers. And I hope that you agree.